eternal knowledge. It was spoken many times. And right now, Lord Krishna is speaking the Bhagavad Gita in some other universe. Hare Krishna, would you like me to translate? Okay, Prabhu, yes. Okay. La Bhagavad Gita n'a pas seulement été parlée il y a 5000 ans. Elle a été parlée plusieurs fois dans tous les univers. Et en fait, nous célébrons l'apparition la, de la Bhagavad Gita un peu prématurément, car normalement, ce sera mardi durant le Ekadashi. So the Bhagavad Gita, as we said, was spoken many times. And in fact, in the Bhagavad Gita, we see Lord Krishna explaining to Arjuna that previously he had spoken this knowledge on another planet to the sun god, Viviswan. And he describes how Viviswan gave this knowledge to Manu and then to, it came to Iksvaku, it came to the earth planet. Krishna explique comme, comme quoi ce n'est pas la première fois qu'il explique cette Bhagavad Gita et qu'il l'avait il expliqué avant à, au dieu du soleil, Vivasvan, et comme quoi Vivasvan l'a expliqué à, à son fils Manu. So what is, is, what is Manu's name? Manu Iksvaku, then Manu gave Iksvaku. to Iksvaku. Son fils. So what, we want to understand what is this knowledge which uh, Krishna gave to the Sun God and which has been around for so long and which is spoken everywhere in different universes. Nous aimerions savoir quel est ce, ce savoir qui a été raconté au Dieu du Soleil et qui a été dit dans plusieurs univers. Et c'est très important. So this knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita is knowledge of the eternal soul this the soul which all of we are all eternal souls la connaissance dans la bhagavad gita est la connaissance à propos de l'âme éternelle nous sommes tous des âmes éternelles c'est très important de savoir cette connaissance we are eternal souls living in a material body so the bhagavad gita describes the relationship between the soul and the body. Nous sommes des âmes éternelles spirituelles vivant dans le corps matériel. Et la Bhagavad Gita explique la relation de l'âme éternelle avec le corps matériel. The Bhagavad Gita then goes on to describe that there is not just only one soul, but actually there are two souls, both within the heart of every living entity. There's an individual soul and there's a super soul which is a part of the Supreme Bhagavan. La, la Bhagavad Gita continue en expliquant qu'il n'y a pas seulement une âme, mais il y en a deux. L'âme individuelle et l'âme suprême, qui, est, qui accompagne chaque âme dans chaque corps particulier différent. The super soul the, who is residing in the heart is an expansion of the original speaker of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna. Dame suprême qui, qui réside dans le cœur avec chaque âme est une, est une incarnation du, de, de Krishna qui explique la Bhagavad Gita. Lord, Lord Krishna is described as Bhagavan. In the Bhagavad Gita, when Lord Krishna speaks, Srila Vyasadeva has put Sri Bhagavan Uvacha, meaning that the, pers the Supreme Personality of Godhead is speaking. Le Seigneur Krishna, quand il, quand il parle, l'auteur du livre Bhagavad Gita, uh, Vyasadeva, le, le, le nom Bhagavan, cela veut dire le Seigneur. Avant que quand Krishna parle, quand c'est son tour de parler dans la Bhagavad Gita, c'est écrit Shri Bhagavan Vacha. Ça veut dire que le Seigneur Bhagavan, c'est lui qui prend la parole. So 5,000 years ago, the Bhagavad Gita was spoken by Krishna to Arjuna at a, on, in, a, in a holy place which is called Kurukshetra. Il y a 5,000 ans, la Bhagavad Gita a été énoncé par Arjuna et Krishna dans un, un lieu sacré, 
un champ de bataille qui s'appelle Kurukshetra. At that time, there was going to be a great battle going to take place. A great battle between two, fam two divisions of one family. They were both members of the Yadu dynasty, but there was a problem between the two sides. À ce moment-là, sur le lieu sacré, qui n'était pas seulement un champ de bataille, il y allait y avoir lieu un champ de bataille à ce moment-là, entre deux familles. Deux familles, très bien, mais qu'il y avait un désaccord entre les deux. So th this uh, battle and the incidents which took place during the battle are all described in detail in a famous scripture called the Mahabharata. And the Bhagavad Gita comes from the Mahabharata. Cette grande bataille qui a eu lieu sur ce, cette terre sacrée est, est, est décrite entièrement dans le, le grand livre épique, le, le Mahabharata. Et, euh, le Bhag la Bhagavad Gita est tirée du livre Mahabharata. The Bhagavad Gita is a very small part of the Mahabharata. Bhagavad Gita <laughs> only has 18 chapters. La, la Bhagavad Gita n'est qu'une infime partie du, du Mahabharata. La Bhagavad Gita contient 18 chapitres. Today we just finished reading one chapter. We read the 15th chapter, what was called the Yoga Purushottam or the Yoga of the Supreme Person. Aujourd'hui, nous avons juste complété un chapitre de la Bhagavad Gita, le 15e, qui s'appelle le Yoga Purushottam, le Yoga de la Personne Suprême. There are three main subject matters described in the Bhagavad Gita. There is Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga and Bhakti Yoga. Il y, a, il y a trois yoga principaux qui sont décrits dans la Bhagavad Gita. Le Karma Yoga, le Jnana Yoga et le Bhakti Yoga. Karma Yoga means the yoga of action. Lord Krishna, in speaking the Bhagavad Gita, is encouraging all of us to, not to stop action but to keep working and to be active. Le karma yoga, c'est l'enseignement d'être actif dans le yoga. Krishna, dans la Bhagavad Gita, nous enseigne par le karma yoga de ne pas arrêter son travail, mais d'être très actif pour le Seigneur. Arjuna, who was Krishna's friend and Krishna's student there on the battlefield at Kurukshetra, Arjuna was thinking to stop action and to give up action. But Krishna didn't want him to do that. Krishna encouraged him to act. Au début, Arjuna voulait arrêter les activités. Quand il était devant le champ de bataille, il voulait s'arrêter, mais Krishna l'a déconseillé d'arrêter, mais plutôt l'a encouragé à, à être dans, dans l'action. Then, Jnana Yoga is a process, a yoga of knowledge where one should cultivate knowledge by study of the scriptures and meditation, contemplation, and in this way realize more of one's own spiritual nature. Le Jnana Yoga, le deuxième, c'est un yoga, le yoga du savoir et, et de la sagesse. Cela comporte méditer et étudier les écritures pour avoir la, la sagesse et la connaissance du suprême. Lord Krishna, however, described that by the process of knowledge, one will make progress only very slowly and with a lot of trouble. Krishna, par contre, dit que par le Jnana Yoga, le yoga du savoir, l'on pourra faire du progrès seulement très lentement, et ce sera pas très rapidement. Krishna encouraged Arjuna and all of us that the best yoga is the yoga of devotion, which is called bhakti yoga. Krishna dit donc que le bhakti yoga, le yoga de la devotion, c'est le meilleur. It is the easiest yoga, it is the most practical of all yoga, and it is the most joyful to perform. Le bhakti yoga, 
C'est le yoga le plus facile, pratique, et le, le, le plus, le, on est le plus heureux quand on pratique celui-ci. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes how we can perform bhakti yoga. Dans la Bhagavad Gita, Krishna décrit comment pratiquer le bhakti yoga. Krishna says to Arjuna that we should try to do four things. First of all, we should engage our mind in thinking of Krishna. Krishna explique que dans le bhakti yoga, il faut faire quatre choses principales. D'abord, il faut engager l'esprit en Krishna, penser à Krishna avec l'esprit. The mind is very restless and it wanders here and there. It's always searching, trying to find something to absorb itself in. L'esprit change toujours de, de, de choses à, à quoi elle pense. Elle est toujours en train de s'absorber dans des différentes choses de la pensée. In the, in the practice of yoga, however, one should steady the mind and fix the mind on one thing. So the best thing we should fix the mind on is Lord Krishna, the form of Lord Krishna, the name of Lord Krishna, and the activities and qualities of Lord Krishna. Dans le yoga, l'important c'est de contrôler l'esprit. Et donc, pour contrôler l'esprit, il, il faudrait penser à Krishna, et les activités et les, la forme de Krishna. C'est le meilleur moyen pour euh, contrôler son esprit. Then, the, the second thing we want to do to practice Bhakti Yoga is to become a devotee of Krishna. Ensuite, la deuxième chose à faire, si nous, nous aimerions pratiquer le, le Bhakti Yoga, c'est de devenir un, un dévot de Krishna. Devotees of Krishna will chant the names of Krishna and they will sing songs about Krishna. <laughs> Les dévots de Krishna chantent les noms de Krishna et ils chantent les chansons à propos de Krishna. And they will read the books about Krishna and they will talk about Krishna. Ils, ils lisent les livres aussi à propos de Krishna et ils, ils se parlent entre eux sur Krishna, Dieu. Then we are encouraged also to worship Krishna. Ensuite, nous sommes encouragés à vénérer Krishna. We can worship Krishna in simple ways. Some things we can do, we can offer flowers to Krishna. Nous pouvons vénérer de Krishna avec une manière très simple. Par exemple, de lui offrir des fleurs. We can offer fruits to Krishna. Ou bien aussi des fruits. We are encouraged, whatever we eat and whatever we offer and give away, we should offer to Krishna. Nous sommes encouragés que quoi que nous mangions ou quoi que nous, nous donnions, de le don, donner à Krishna ou de l'offrir à Krishna avant de le manger. And so devotees of Krishna, they take great pleasure in cooking for Krishna. And they will cook very nice foodstuffs, especially sweets. And because Lord Krishna is very fond of sweets, so we will cook nice sweets and offer to Krishna and then we will distribute to everyone. Les devotees de Krishna prennent un grand plaisir à cuisiner pour Krishna. Ils cuisinent toutes sortes de choses comme des choses des sucreries, des choses salées et ensuite ils les offrent à Krishna pour son plaisir avec plaisir et ensuite ils les distribuent à, aux différentes personnes. And then the fourth thing we should do, I said for the four things which we should do, so the fourth thing we're supposed to do, we should bow down to Krishna, offer our obeisances to Krishna. When we go to a temple, we will enter the temple and when we see the altar with the form of Krishna, then we will bow before that. Quand nous allons dans un temple où nous voyons l'autel où il y a Krishna dessus, nous allons nous prosterner devant lui. 
by bowing down, then we're showing our respect to Krishna and we're getting also purification, we're developing humility. Quand nous nous prosternons devant le Dieu Krishna dans le temple, eh bien, nous, re, nous recevons ces bénédictions et nous nous montrons notre, notre respect pour, pour Krishna, le Seigneur suprême. Some often people, material world, they become very proud and they don't like to bow to anyone. They think, why I should bow down? Why I should bow down? Il y a des gens sur terre qui, qui deviennent beaucoup trop fiers. Et ils disent, pourquoi est-ce que je devrais me prosterner ou, ou m'asseoir ou me, me prosterner devant quelqu'un d'autre But if we don't, if we don't develop humility before Krishna and if we don't bow before Krishna, then in the future we will be forced to bow down to old age and to disease and to death. Si nous ne nous prosternons pas devant Krishna, si nous ne montrons pas notre, euh, notre vénération à lui dans le futur, nous serons obligés de nous, de nous prosterner et, et, de, et de se coucher devant la mort et devant l'âge et devant, devant la maladie. To have to be forced to bow down to things like old age and disease and death is not very nice, it's not very pleasant, it's a painful experience. Il est très douloureux et il est, il est très désagréable de devoir, de devoir être la victime et de se prosterner, par contre, devant la mort et devant la maladie, c'est des choses très douloureuses. But by those who are devotees, they will willingly bow before Krishna. They're happy to bow before Krishna. And by bowing before Krishna, they know that they will not see birth and death again in the material world. Ceux qui, ceux qui, sont, ceux qui se prosternent devant Krishna, eux, ils sont très contents de, de faire ainsi. Et ils savent que en se prosternant devant Krishna, ils n'auront pas besoin de, de le refaire devant la mort et qu'ils ne reviendront pas dans ce monde et qu'ils seront libres simplement en se prosternant devant Krishna. Ils seront libres de se prosterner devant la mort et les choses douloureuses. By bowing before Krishna means we will no longer see birth and death in the material world and we will go on to be liberated from the material world. En devenant le dévot de Krishna, nous n'aurions plus besoin de revenir dans le monde matériel. Nous serons libres de cette souffrance. Et donc, il est mieux de, de montrer notre respect à lui et notre soumission à lui, à lui que notre soumission devant la, la mort et les, les choses désagréables du monde matériel. And so, we like to cook for Krishna and we offer, of course, vegetarian food to Krishna. Because Krishna is a vegetarian, Krishna likes, he likes cows, he has many cows and they give milk and Krishna enjoys to drink milk. Donc nous cuisinons des choses végétariennes pour Krishna, car, car Krishna est végétarien et il adore les vaches. Et donc il adore les, le lait et les produits laitiers et donc nous, nous cuisinons pour lui des... des des mets végétariens avec des produits laitiers pour lui. So Krishna likes the milk, but he doesn't like the meat. He won't eat the meat. He won't eat meat of any animal, especially a cow. Krishna ne mange pas de viande. Il aime, il aime le lait, mais il, il ne mange jamais de viande de n'importe quelle source. So from the Bhagavad Gita, we learn about the path of devotion, about awakening our relationship with Krishna. Dans, dans la Bhagavad Gita, nous, nous apprenons comment se réveiller à la conscience de Krishna. Nous venons sur le, le chemin qui mène à la conscience divine. We should understand Lord Krishna is a real person. 
He was on this planet 5,000 years ago and he spoke this book, the Bhagavad Gita. Il nous faut bien comprendre que Krishna était une personne qui est venue il y a 5000 ans sur cette planète pour, pour énoncer la Bhagavad Gita sur ce champ de bataille de Kurukshetra. And when he spoke this Bhagavad Gita, he understood that this knowledge was going to be beneficial, was going to be helpful for people throughout this age, this coming age, which is called Kali Yuga, which goes on for many thousands of years. Et en énonçant cette Bhagavad Gita, cette sagesse, il savait que, que ce serait très bénéfique pour les personnes à venir, les, toutes les personnes du futur dans le Kali Yuga que nous vivons maintenant. So the Bhagavad Gita, although it was most recently spoken 5,000 years ago, and we said it was spoken even millions of years ago in other places, La Bhagavad Gita a donc été dite il y a 5000 ans, mais elle a aussi été énoncée il y a plusieurs millions d'années dans des autres endroits de, de l'univers. But the Bhagavad Gita is famous all over the, not, over, not, not only all over this planet, but throughout the whole creation. La Bhagavad Gita, par contre, est réputée dans toute la création, non seulement sur cette planète ou dans cet univers, mais dans toute la création du Seigneur. And just by reading the Bhagavad Gita and speaking about the Bhagavad Gita, we get great benefit. We get, we're able to clean our hearts and we're able to progress out of the material world of birth and death. En, en entendant parler de la Bhagavad Gita et en, 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 la, en la parlant nous-mêmes, nous pouvons purifier notre cœur et euh, transcender le, notre, ce monde matériel. So we're very happy to celebrate the Bhagavad Gita. And on this day, on the actual day of the Gita, when Krishna spoke the Gita, many people, they will read the whole Bhagavad Gita, all 18 chapters. 18 chapters is made up of 700 different slokas or verses. Donc nous sommes très heureux de célébrer la, la Bhagavad Gita aujourd'hui. Et généralement, le jour de la célébration de la Bhagavad Gita, beaucoup de devas vont, vont lire les 18 chapitres, euh, le, la Bhagavad Gita en entier, et euh, dire la Bhagavad Gita en entier ce jour-là. Mm. So we encourage all of you, if you get time on Tuesday, on the actual day when Krishna spoke, you can also try to read the whole Bhagavad Gita or try to recite it and remember Lord Krishna, how he so kindly came here and spoke this knowledge for all of our benefit. Alors, nous encourageons tout le monde à lire la Bhagavad Gita, surtout durant le jour de son apparition, et donc à recevoir le bénéfice de la Bhagavad Gita et, que, et se rappeler que Krishna est tellement gentil d'avoir de nous avoir enseigné cette Bhagavad Gita pour le bénéfice de tous. Ok, so we will stop here and ask if there's any questions. Des questions. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Michael Prabhu. Uh, do you have any question? Uh, please raise your hand or actually at this point you can just unmute yourself and ask us also any reflection on Bhagavad Gita and uh, what we heard from Guru Maharaj. Maybe it's something in the chat, I don't know. No, there is nothing in the chat, Guru Maharaj, oh. I have been checking. Oh, okay, thank you. Hare Krishna, uh, Piranjala Prabhu. Piranjala Prabhu, we cannot hear you very properly. Can you, if you speak, understand me? But it's, currently, it's very difficult to hear and understand. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's about 
uh, translate language from the soul, a time of death. Uh, if I'm not able to think about Krishna, I will think about uh, material things and I come back. That's, uh, that's the explanation of Krishna. That's, uh, that's the way it is. I have to think about Krishna. That's why I think Hare Krishna every day. Uh, if, if you're not thinking about Krishna when you're dying? Yes. Yes, what love. Yes. Oh. Qu'est-ce qu'il se passe si nous ne pensons pas à Krishna quand nous, nous sommes en train de mourir Est-ce que nous ne n'irons pas dans le monde spirituel si par contre nous, nous, ch nous chantions tous les jours durant notre vie mais nous, nous, nous ne nous rappelons pas de Krishna à la mort Well, we will take birth again in the material world according to what is our consciousness. According to our consciousness at the end of life, there will be some particular things which are there within our mind, which we're very absorbed in and think about them a lot. And so we'll take our next birth and we'll be involved with these things again. Si nous ne chantons pas les noms de Krishna durant notre vie et que nous, nous mourons sans nous rappeler de Krishna, nous allons reprendre vie dans le monde matériel Uh, d'après les, les pensées que nous, nous avons eues et notre karma. Therefore, in the Vedic culture, we will see that people are encouraged at a certain point in their life they should retire from all the material activities and they should just focus on spirituality. Alors, dans la culture védique, il est conseillé qu'à un certain âge, les personnes devraient se consacrer plus aux activités spirituelles et euh, de laisser tomber leur, euh, leur activité matérielle pour, pour pouvoir avancer dans leur vie spirituelle avec Krishna. Yeah, we say that uh, retirement, just like mo in most countries, you know, you work to a certain age and then you retire. As you get older, you're not able to function so well and you, you, you stop working physically. But we're, at that point, we should take up spiritual activities and we should absorb ourselves in chanting and reading the Bhagavad Gita and hearing about spiritual practice. Généralement, à un certain âge, nous, nous ne sommes plus très capables de travailler dans des choses très matérielles telles la construction. À ce moment-là, il, il, il est évident de de s'adonner à des activités spirituelles et à avancer dans le, dans le, le chemin spirituel. We have to understand it's going to take time for us to get free from all the attachments to the material world. Il faut se rendre compte que ça va prendre du temps de se libérer de tous les attachements du monde matériel. So before we can get out of this material world, we have to get free from all these attachments. Avant de se du monde matériel, il faut donc être libre de tous ces attachements matériels. Otherwise, we come back again, we take birth again, and we don't know what kind of birth we take. It may be a human body, it may not. Sinon, nous, nous revenons dans le monde matériel, nous reprenons vie dans, dans un corps matériel. Et nous ne savons pas dans quel corps matériel nous allons prendre vie, tel le corps d'un animal, etc. If we die in the mode of passion and ignorance, then we will take birth, our next life again, it will be in the mode of passion and ignorance. Si nous mourons dans le mode de la passion ou de l'ignorance matérielle, nous allons ensuite reprendre, reprendre naissance dans ces, dans ces modes de conscience. And if we die in the mode of goodness, then we'll take our next birth in the mode of goodness. Par contre, si nous mourons dans, dans le mode du bien matériel, eh bien, nous reprendrons naissance dans, un, dans le mode positif, le mode du bien. In the mode of goodness, we become conditioned to knowledge and happiness. Par contre, même dans le mode 
du bien, du bien-être. Nous sommes conditionnés dans la joie et nous vivons quand même dans le monde matériel. In the mode of passion, we're addicted to activities with, with very strong attachments, and that causes a lot of suffering. Dans le mode de la passion, nous avons beaucoup d'attachements, et cela crée beaucoup de souffrances. And the mode of ignorance, just is darkness and ignorance from beginning to end. Et le, et le mode de l'ignorance. C'est les ténèbres, et, et la tristesse, et la souffrance, du, du début à la fin. So those who practice bhakti yoga, who are chanting Hare Krishna, they want to get out from this world. They don't want to come back into the material world. They don't want to take another birth. Et donc, ceux qui, ceux qui chantent Hare Krishna, ils veulent être libres du monde matériel. Ils ne veulent pas reprendre naissance dans, dans ce monde de la mort. They want to go beyond this world and to enter into the kingdom of Krishna, and to be with Krishna and associate with Krishna there in the spiritual world. Ils veulent aller plus loin. Ils, ve ils veulent être en compagnie de Krishna dans le monde spirituel. And there, the life is full of knowledge and bliss eternally. Et dans ce monde spirituel, c'est plein de, de savoir et de félicité, d'être heureux tout le temps. But the material world is just miserable from beginning to end. Le monde matériel n'est que misérable du début à la fin. All right, thank you. Yes, okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, very much. Hare Krishna. Yes, Maharaj, very much. Do we have any uh, more question? I have another question. Krishna explained yes, explain that uh, in, uh, we can see him uh, in, uh, in, 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 in maintaining everything and the source of the sun, the, the moon, fire, and um, the, the, the guided thought with strength and the and, and if I see Krishna in all these things, you know, is it in personal connection? Or is it the whole vision, the whole connected vision of the Krishna star? Or, um, I mean, is it good to see Krishna in all these aspects? Or is it not as close as we can't hear you again. Again, for the external noise, we can hear you. Could you please repeat? Okay, now it's better. Yes, well, certainly uh, to see Krishna in all of these objects of the material world, it's Krishna's energy rather than Krishna. So we should always remember that there's a personality behind all of the phenomena of the material world. That when we, we see the light of the sun and the moon and the taste in water and so many, the, the, you talked about the heat and the fire and the fire of digestion, all these things. There's so many different phenomena in the world. So we should understand these are all different energies of Krishna. And behind all of these is the energetic. So it's not that we worship energy, but we should understand that energy has a source. It comes from the person. So contemplating the energy of Krishna in itself is purifying, provided we keep the service attitude. 
There must be the mood of giving service to the Supreme. We are not the Supreme, we cannot become the Supreme, but we do have a relationship with Him, and that is of master and servant. He is the master and we are the servant. So when we contemplate the world and we see it all as energy, it's all right, but we have to keep the mood of service, that I should give service to the Supreme Lord, that there's a personality behind this world. We can see features, you can see so many things are arranged for the, sus for the maintenance of this world. Who has arranged all of these things? Of course, they all come from Krishna. And they're all Krishna's energy. So we have a debt to Krishna. And we should show that debt to Krishna. We should try to repay that debt by giving service. Of course, we can never fully repay, but we should at least understand that we are in debt to him for everything which he's given us. And we should therefore take up service. So we talk about bhakti yoga as devotional service. That we have to we have to want to do something for the service of Krishna. And what can we do for him? Well, it begin one thing which we can do is to chant his holy name. That's the beginning. And then we also offer the results of our work for his pleasure. Nous pouvons voir Krishna dans les choses matérielles. Mais il faut se rappeler que c'est la personne suprême Krishna qui est dans toutes ces choses. Pas simplement savoir artificiellement que, que toutes les choses font partie de Krishna. Mais il faut se rappeler que Krishna est une personne. Et non seulement ces choses font partie de Dieu, mais que Dieu est une personne à part entière. Et il faut donc se rappeler de le servir. C'est ça l'important. Pas seulement savoir que tout représente Krishna, mais que Krishna est aussi une personne à part entière. Et donc, il faut servir Krishna. C'est ça la beauté du Bhakti Yoga. Le servir et se soumettre à lui et le connaître, c'est très important. Pas seulement toujours se rappeler que tout est Dieu, etc. Il faut le servir et, et se soumettre à lui et ainsi Développer une, une conscience du service au Suprême et ainsi être avec lui. Ok. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. We are. Uh, we don't have uh, more time to take any more questions, but we have uh, Sri Devi Gorangi Devi Dashi Mataji who has one final question, maybe. Hare Krishna, thank you very much Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, my question is short. My question is, uh, how do we get someone who's very, very new to Krishna consciousness started on the Bhagavad Gita? Because that person asked me to show him a Bhagavad Gita. It's a young, young college student who said that he wants to see the Bhagavad Gita. So I showed uh, the big version and the medium one and uh, the small all same content i told the person but it's just our, our whether our preference to have the big book or the small book so how do we get someone started guru maharaj thank you very much yes well i would suggest uh, to get someone started in the bhagavad gita really they it, it's good if they can uh, hear some lectures on the Bhagavad Gita. If there's some regular classes going on and he could listen to the lectures being given on some of the different topics of the Bhagavad Gita, I think that's helpful. La réponse à la question, comment mettre quelqu'un sur le chemin de, de lire la Bhagavad Gita s'il s'intéresse un petit peu à la Bhagavad Gita La réponse est qu'il qu qu le mieux serait peut-être de l'inspirer pour, euh, pour euh, apprendre la Bhagavad Gita 
en lui donnant l'opportunité d'entendre des, des classes, euh, des, des grands maîtres qui, qui enseignent la Bhagavad Gita par euh, la parole, leur parole. Entendre la Bhagavad Gita de grands maîtres dans des, dans des classes, dans des speeches. Srila mm. Prabhupada's introduction to the Bhagavad Gita is also very nice to read. Let him go through the introduction of the Bhagavad Gita. L'introduction de la Bhagavad Gita par Srila Prabhupada, les premières pages avant les enseignements tels quels de la Bhagavad Gita sont très bien faits par Srila Prabhupada. Et cela serait très bien pour un débutant de lire l'introduction à la Bhagavad Gita par Srila Prabhupada. Okay. Thank you for the question and thank you for the response, Guru Maharaj. Now we'll move on to the next uh, section of our um, today's activity. We have uh, Chandra Mataji who will share some of her drawings on Bhagavad Gita. And I invite Chandra Mataji to please unmute yourself and tell us a few words and show your drawing. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna, this was my, this thing, my humble offer for Lord Krishna. When there was a Gita Bhashim class was going on in our group, uh, I made this Vishwarupam. Vishwarupam, this is the Vishwarupam. It is, da, it is on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Uh, first, at first uh, day, uh, Krish, uh, Arjuna was in doubt whether uh, he was very sad he, that he had to fight all his teachers, Gurujis, his cousins, everyone, and kill them all. But then Krishna uh, takes him on the right path of Dharma and Dharma and uh, show who he is actually. He is the Supreme Lord. And uh, when he has, uh, when the Arjuna wanted to see his real form, he is request uh, Lord Krishna to show who he is, who what is his real form, and uh, then the Lord shows him his real form, and he shows him in this thing in a big, huge Vishwarupa. He's uh, he has all the celestial weapons in his hand. He is the sun. He is the moon, and uh, he. He has uh, many, many, many forms and he has uh, Adi Shesha above his head protecting him always. If Adi Shesha is with him always, when, whenever he takes any avatar, Lord, the Adi Shesha also goes with him. And uh, you can see in the battlefield, uh, Arjuna pays uh, on his knees, obeys uh, on his knees with folded hands. And you can see all the, at the background, all the elephants standing ready for the battle. And his garland, Lord Krishna's uh, Vishwarupa's garland, his weapons, and the, he, he says, I am the night, I am the day, I am the universe, I am everything in this world, I am the Agni, I am the Vayu, I am the whole universe, I am all the planets, everything he shows. Yes, anything Mataji. else? Yes, Mataji, thank you. I would like to request you to turn the camera because we couldn't see uh, the Vishwarupam. Um, um, image that you oh, created. Is it okay? We still don't see it. Maybe you can uh, flip the phone. I mean, uh, turn the camera. I don't know which device you are using. If it's a computer, you can turn it so that we can see. Yeah. Now we see you. <laughs> okay. One minute. One minute. I'll sure. just. This is the one I have. I have with me. This is the one photograph. I can zoom it for whichever way we want. This is Lord Krishna. Chandra Mami, do you have it huh? in the computer? Computer. <laughs> or do you have the hard copy? Hard copy. One minute. Where is your drawing? Like, the opposite photo. Upper to the ma, then we took it at the top. No, not like that. I have it like this. I took the photograph and then transferred it to this. Uh, the photo of the camera. This is no, this okay, is Mami, not. This uh, is you can send it to me. I can share it. You can send it to me in WhatsApp. I can share the drawing in between. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The 
while Mataji is sending her image picture to uh, Vaishnavi Mataji, I will quickly share, not quickly, I will take my time to share Harini Mataji's drawing. Uh, is Harini Mataji in the room today, Vaishnavi Mani Mataji? Namaskaram, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mataji, I'm showing your uh, drawing. Please share your few words with us. Sure, thank you. Oh. Hare Krishna. Uh, I painted this painting in Warli style. And uh, Warli is a, it's a tribal art form from India. And mainly they use geometrical shapes like triangles, circles, and lines, simple uh, vocabulary. And uh, this had, the scene I had depicted here is the confusion that Arjuna had. Uh, as Chandramami told, we had a satsangam in a Vishishtadvaitan group of Switzerland and there we had a Gita Bhashyam class and uh, at that time I painted this. So the scene here is the Arjuna had a uh, doubt what I, what I have to do. I have my gurus, I have my cousins, everything in front of me and I have to fight with them. So this is the painting I have done. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. And uh, I just have a question in terms of the colors and what you used. It looks almost like a uh, like a uh, like white and only very simple color. Like, are there? Is it is it the tradition? Like, do you use more color or keep it simple? It, it is it is kept simple. Generally, uh, in worldly tradition, what we use is mostly the earthy tones, the the color of the mud or the color of the cow dung mainly. It's a greenish brown. That is what we use and it is always white. The characters are always painted in white. So it is a very simple art, for, uh, very simple colors, only one or two colors we use. Not very, uh, no, we don't use five or six colors, just two. Okay. Thank you, Mataji. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Uh, I'm gonna come back to uh, Chandra Mataji uh, or Vaishwari Mataji. Have, have you gotten the picture? Um, yeah, I just now got it. Yeah, I'll share it to you, Prabhu. Yeah, we got the picture of Chandra Mami now. Okay. I would actually like to. Uh, come back to this because we, we have to uh, organize the pictures of the back end. But uh, if I would also like to welcome uh, some of the participants to share your few words with us in terms of in, in the eve of celebrating Gita Jayanti, if you would like to share a few words. And maybe I would request uh, first Jay Krishna Kumar Mataji, if you can, if you want to share a few words with us. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kamsa Chanu Ramadhanam Devaki Paramhanantam Krishna Mante Jagat Guru. Uh, thank you, uh, my Prabhuji. I am happy to, to share a few words. Uh, as Vaishnavi uh, said, that this is uh, today's focus will be chapter 15 of Bhagavad Gita. And as some of the participants have already pointed out, uh, we have had a, a, a session, satsang on Gita Bhashyam of Bhagavad Gita by Sri Ramanujacharya in our satsang over several years, I should say uh, four or five years, uh, looking at each shloka uh, in detail and, uh, and uh, under, trying to understand the meaning. And the chapter 15 is one of the uh, one of the most important chapters, because as we all, as uh, Guru Maharaj has highlighted, in fact, all the important points about it, so there's nothing much to add. Uh, this is called the Purushottama Yoga, that is the theory of Purushottama, theory of supreme reality, the absolute reality. And so Krishna, Lord Krishna explains how you know, everything is pervaded by him, everything happens because of him, you know, and he's the cause of the creation. Uh, I think it has been very beautifully and very, you know, nicely explained by Guru Maharaj. And since everybody is sharing drawings, I thought, you know, in this chapter, Krishna, Lord Krishna compares the creation to an Ashwatta tree. Ashwatta tree meaning the people tree, right? 
and he, is, he describes, he gives a very beautiful imagery of the creation. He says that the whole creation, the samsara, is like the Ashwatthar tree upside down. And uh, he explains you know, the, the, the cycle of births and deaths uh, with this imagery. And since everybody is sharing pictures, I would also, uh, when we had this chapter in our satsang, uh, we talked about this Ashwatta tree. In fact, the reference to Ashwatta tree is also found in Tato Upanishad. You know, most of what uh, Bhagavad Gita and as Guru Maharaj was explaining, this is all eternal knowledge. It only it didn't come about only during the battlefield, but at the uh, in the battlefield uh, during the battle. But also, this is it has existed ever, you know, forever. And so, this Ashwatthama reference to Ashwatthama tree is found in Upanishads. You know, Upanishads are part of Vedas and are part of the eternal knowledge. And so, I thought I would share my. I, I had prepared a drawing of this Ashwatthama tree and the, what the message of Krishna based on this Ashwatthama tree during the session. I thought I would just, if I have one minute, just share that drawing. Of course, it's not as beautiful as the drawings that we have, we have seen because I'm a very poor uh, drawing. Uh, I, I, I'm very bad at drawing. But that's what, just to explain the message. So Vaishnavi Mataji or Tanmay uh, Guruji, can, if, if, can, I, can I have the permission to yes, share? Yes, Mataji, of course. You can share screen already. Okay. Okay. Ah, I can share screen. OK, so can you see my? Uh, Yes. My, uh, can you yes. all see my screen? Yeah. So this is what Krishna says actually in this uh, in this uh, chapter. I mean the beginning of the chapter. So he says that the the, the samsara is like uh, this uh, Ashwatthama tree, and this Ashwatthama tree, you know, as you can see that it is uh, it is a tree where which has uh, you know roots up root upwards and the branches downward. So it is already depicting the samsara with its roots upward, starting from Brahma, the creator, through, I mean, uh, uh, the, the Supreme Person creates the universe through Brahma, because that is the first uh, being created and everything else uh, Brahma takes care of. So that starting from Chaturmukha Brahma, everything is part of this creation, the uh, samsara. And this tree, on the, the, the tree has uh, branches and leaves and these ten leaves are described as the as the Vedas by Krishna and this uh, the, these trees are, are give teachers on the one hand uh, this tree is, uh, this this tree teaches how to attain uh, things that we want may, may want in this material world you know by by uh, doing yagas and yagyas you know that are fruits of some some actions that we would like to achieve while we are in this material world. So these uh, this in this if you take these if you use these leaves or if you, you know um, consume these leaves, then you just go into this eternal existence of birth and death because you 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 are prompted to do actions because of your desire to attain some material things, and then you that in that way you perform you know you gain karma and then you come back and then the eternal cycle continues but this tree also has other leaves which teach the same it's also part of the vedas which teach us how to reach the ultimate goal the ultimate the supreme person the purushottama that is being described in this chapter who is the goal of liberation how to liberate oneself so if we use those leaves rather than the leaves that lead to material comforts, but you, or the leaves that will give us the way to liberate oneself and uh, reach the ultimate, the supreme, then we go upwards. So as you can see, the ordinary souls go downwards because they use the kind of, within quotes, the wrong leaves. And the eleva elevated souls go upwards because they make use of the correct leaves. And the, the whole idea is to cut off this these roots, you know, cut oneself from the tree by using the axe, and he calls this axe the axe of detachment. So how do you cut the roots of the tree? The tree itself is through the axe of detachment, that is, detachment to the fruits of action. While performing the action, we detach ourselves from the fruits of action, from the fact, from the thinking that I am doing it, so that one should detach oneself, the agency, and also this uh, the, from the thought that the action is mine. So there are three types of detachment. Detachment that 
of the thought that I am doing it, detachment from the thought that its action is mine. So the I and the mind, we call it, you know, ahankara and mamakara. Ahankara, the thought that I am doing it. And mamakara is that this is mine, this action is mine. And the lastly, the fruit of the action, which is the halatya. So if you do these three, uh, these th if you have these three types of detachment, then you can cut this tree and then go upwards and liberate yourself and reach the Purushottama, who is the Lord Krishna. So this is my my very you know, humble uh, offering to, to, to the, uh, the group on the occasion of this Buddha Dhaniti. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Mataji. Uh, thank you for your words and thank you for sharing the picture and and uh, sharing with us with your, your knowledge. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to also request if uh, Malalan Pramuji, if you are here, uh, to share with us a few words. Uh, Pramuji is not there, so we can move to this kit. Yeah, sorry. Okay. So, thank you, Mataji. We have uh, now a small short skit of two uh, friends who are studying in the beginning years of their university life. And uh, these two characters will be played by Bhavana and Bhubana. Both of you, if you turn on your camera, I'll spotlight you. So uh, you are there and you can start any time. Hey Bhuvana, how are you doing? It's been a long time since I saw you. You seem to be very busy. Hare Krishna, how are you? I'm doing good. Yes, you're right. I've been busy taking the Bhakti Shastri course. Bhakti Shastri? It sounds strange. Never heard of it. Is it a new degree introduced in the University of Geneva? Oh no, it's a degree course offered at the Mayapur Institute for the Systematic Study of the Bhagavad Gita. Have you heard of the Bhagavad Gita? Yes, I know a bit. But my question is, why is Lord Krishna always bragging and boasting about himself? He says, I am the taste of water, I am the light of the sun, and I am the ability in man, I am the strength of the strong, etc. Okay, I'll get to you about that. Besides that, tell me, how's it going for you in your university? Yes, it's going very well. You wouldn't believe it. I've been recently awarded for the best marathon runner, elected as student representative, and many of our professors have appreciated my research. And I'm even one of the nominees for the best violin player. Oh, really? Aren't you just boasting and bragging about yourself though? What? That's unfair. I just told you my achievements in the university. Are you jealous? Yes, you got the point. Similarly, in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna tells us about the supreme position to Arjuna. He says in Sloka 7.7, Mata Parataram Nanyate Kinchedashti Dananjaya Mai Sarva Midam Protam Sutre Mani Ganaiva O conqueror of wealth, there is no truth superior to me. Everything rests upon me as pearl strung on a thread. He also says, I am the original seed of all existence, and I am in everyone's heart as the super soul. He says this so that we can understand who the Supreme Lord is, who we are, and what our relationship with God is. Without understanding Bhagavad Gita, one can lead only an animal life. Are you saying I'm leading an animal life? Well, yes. Animals only live to eat, sleep, made and defend. If human life is used only for eating, sleeping, mating and defending, it's the same as an animal life. Okay, tell me how your life is so different from my so-called animal life. Aren't you eating and sleeping too? Yes, I am eating, but I only eat prasadam, food that is offered to Lord Krishna. I am preparing the food which Lord Krishna likes and then offer it to him with love and devotion. I sleep so that I can get up early to do shanty. So, I am trying to do everything for the pleasure of Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God. Previously, I was doing everything for my own enjoyment. Now, I am doing the same activity, but my consciousness is different. So, you don't eat meat anymore? You don't drink? That's surprising. How is that possible? No, I don't eat meat, fish or eggs anymore. 
I also do Japa meditation, which is the Hare Krishna mantra chanting on beads. It's possible by practicing the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. Today is the auspicious day of Gita Jayanti. I wanted to offer you the book Bhagavad Gita as it is, written by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Great, thank you very much. I feel inspired to lead a pure life just like you. I would also like to know more about the Bhagavad Gita. It was great talking to you. Okay, that would be very nice. Meanwhile, you can join online classes in Zoom on Saturdays to understand more about Bhagavad Gita. In the class, you will learn about who we are, why we are here in this world, and where we are going next. All in all, you learn about the goal of human life. I hope to see you at the class this Saturday. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. I've learned a lot. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pavan and Bhuvan. It was wonderful. We all really enjoyed it, I'm sure. Um, I'm going to, I have the picture from Chandra Mataji now. And Bhavan and Bhuvan, if you notice, quite a few people are clapping all virtually. Uh, I have the picture now and I'm going to quickly share my screen. Uh, this was the drawing that Chandra Mataji was talking about. If Chandra Mataji, if you are in, in the in the room right now, you can say a few words if you like. But it's completely fine if you, we also heard you last time. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji. Uh, sorry, yeah. At first thing I didn't get it right, Prabhuji. Now, no problem, yeah. Mataji. Now we can huh. see. It's okay. If you uh, want, you can share a few words again. Yeah, uh, this is the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Uh, you can see Arjuna having his doubts about fighting his own teachers, cousins, everyone. But then Krishna disperses his uh, doubts and then uh, uh, disperses his doubt through the teachings of Dharma, uh, uh, Dharma and Bhakti. And Arjuna then uh, understands and bows his head and prays to him. Then Arjuna asks, about uh, his true form, he requests he uh, allowed Krishna uh, to reveal his true form. form. Then uh, Lord Krishna, out of compassion, reveals his true form. You can see the uh, how he projects himself. You can see on one side the day, one side the night, uh, the night and day. He says, "I am the night. I am the day." I am the whole universe, I am the planets, I am the dharma, I am the agni. You can see the many, many heads, the like agni, like uh, uh, Shiva, like uh, Ganesha, all in, rolled into one. I am everything. Krishna then explains that he is everything in this whole universe and he displays his uh, celestial weapons and his nice garland and his uh, nice crown and gold, everything, all his uh, features to uh, Lord Arjuna. But you can see the battlefield, others are at the back side, like the elephant and everything, uh, standing ready for the war. They cannot see his true form only for Arjuna. Arjuna, he will, Lord Krishna provides his divine eyesight, divine eyesight to Lord Arjuna. And he says, anybody, nobody can see me with this, with this ordinary eyesight, eyes, only to the divine eyes. And he provides the divine eyes I said to Lord, uh, Lord to Arjuna, and uh, Arjuna sees his true form. Then he understands, and you can see Arjuna's chariot also standing on one side. Yeah, this is. Thank you, uh, this Thank is you so much, Mataji. This is a very yeah. uh, interesting part of the Gita, and we'll come back to we'll discuss or share a little bit light on it, maybe from Guru Maharaj afterwards, and. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, Mataji. We have thank another. You. We have another uh, drawing from Ravind. And uh, is Ravind? Are you here? If you are, please unmute yourself and maybe share a few words with us. I don't think Ravind is here now, but uh, these were. Sh oh, he is here. Thank you so much for doing the drawing for us. And if you want, you can share a one or two words 
how you felt and uh, drawing these? What inspired you to draw these two? Vaishnavi auntie. <laughs> That's a good inspiration for all of us, not only you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Now we have come to almost towards the end, but before uh, we do the Mahamantra Japa, I want to request uh, Guru Maharaj to kindly uh, share your uh, your thoughts on our small presentation that we tried to do, and uh, or the skit or all, any of the other items. Anything to let us know from your end. Okay. So first of all, I'd like to thank everyone very much. Very enjoyable. I really appreciate very much the presentations, very nice, everything, everything went very well, very encouraging, very inspiring to see so much devotion there among all the members there in our Geneva congregation. And I want to thank all of you from my heart for your kind participation. I think it was a very nice uh, tribute, very nice offering to Lord Krishna on the occasion of his speaking Bhagavad Gita. So thank you again. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Lord. Hare Lord. Now I would like to ask uh, Vaishnavi Vani Mataji if we can uh, go to the last part of our um, session today. Like every other Saturday, we'll do one round of uh, Mahamantra Japa. Yeah, thank you Prabhuji. Thank you so much Guru Maharaj for your time. Uh, Guru Maharaj, we are a bit late for your next class, but uh, if we can still do the one round of Hare Krishna chanting. Yes, okay. Thanks Guru Maharaj. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasati Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama.